All right, let's uh, go to the Australian Medical Association, WA President Michael Page. Thanks for your time, Michael. Good morning, Gary. Yeah, look, uh, well, maybe I'll ask you first up. Clearly, this was a massive decision to, to move the location, and we know that there was a lot of concern uh, from very credentialed uh, people in the medical profession talking about uh, the lack of consultation ahead of it. But, but you know, a figure like 16 and a half grand for a feasibility analysis of actually making such a move, does it surprise you? Well, look, I think what it tells us, Gary, is that the case on the location of the King Edward Replacement Hospital is not yet closed. Um, no meaningful um, feasibility has been uh, feasibility work has been done on the new site, um, as indicated by that figure. Um, whereas ten million dollars was required to exclude QE2 as a site. So I don't think we can say that the uh, I don't think that we can say we've got a final decision as to the site. Did you, Did you know that that was the that that was how much money had been spent on feasibility before making the decision? To be honest, it didn't surprise me given how suddenly right. the announcement was made. Yeah. You know, um, uh, years of work on the QE2 site and then a sudden announcement after a cabinet meeting that, in fact, it would be Fiona Stanley when there had been no talk at all of that site. There had been no engagement with a single clinician in this state involved in the care of um, of women and newborns. Um, and the an announcement was made so suddenly that clearly no work had been done. Because of a feasibility analysis, I, you know, my limited knowledge of that would, would be that it would have to take in pretty well everything in terms of, you know, the appropriateness of the size of the footprint of the building that would be there, the logistics around uh, moving it from uh, near the uh, Perth Children's Hospital and, of course, the major tertiary hospital being Sir Charles Gardner down to Fiona Stanley and so on. I would have thought given past experiences of, of when you FOI or obtain consultants reports that 16 and a half grand wouldn't sort of give you too much i think um um the i think i think your previous guest um mark byron well done to him on on his report um was was quite generous in in um <laughs> in uh, in stating that a, that a big chunk of that 10 million dollar feasibility might be transportable to the new site which is of course the claim of government as well um, my view would be that there is so much more to the feasibility planning of a new hospital um, than simply the, the civil engineering and the physical works. We're talking about a clinical plan here. So that feasibility study that was done into moving um, King Edward to, uh, to, um, to the QE2 site incorporated clinical input, input of paediatric surgeons, neonatologists, right. anaesthetists, obstetricians. Now, um, moving a, building a hospital involves um, clinical planning. The major concern with this plan is that the uh, the King Edward Memorial Replacement Hospital will be 20 kilometres from the Children's Hospital, whereas the original plan was to do the world's best practice setup of having a paediatric hospital located at the same site as an obstetric hospital so that babies born with severe heart defects, severe gut defects and other um, other problems that require immediate surgical care could be done on site. And that is world's best practice, and that's not what we're getting um, according to the current plan. Yeah, and without going out over old ground, I mean, the health minister herself in February this year was absolutely strident that it must be, and I, yeah. I could bring up the grab to prove it, but must be uh, on the Netherlands site and close to Perth Children's Hospital. So that's why I think a lot of the decisions that have followed have really surprised people. Can I ask you whether you're a little bit concerned, I am, uh, that uh, that the, the government won't tell us who did the $16,500 feasibility study. They're saying that that's commercial incompetence, who they use taxpayers' money to, to, to consult with. It's quite strange that that would be commercial incompetence, given it's quite a small, uh, small amount of money, relatively speaking, and um, um, and and something of intense public interest. Uh, I'm not sure what 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 the issues would be. Uh, yeah. Can I just ask you finally? You know, water's going under the bridge, etc. But is there, from what you're picking up, a, a good mood, a good working relationship now between the government, the clinicians, and everyone involved? to make this new baby's hospital work? I mean, are all those talks now going on and meetings are being held and everyone's moving forward or, or are there lots of questions? The clinicians of this state will do everything they can to ensure that the patients of Western Australia get the best possible service. But, of course, we need a constructive relationship with government to achieve that. 
the fact that this decision was made with absolutely no clinician involvement has harmed the relationship between the clinicians working in, the, in this area um, and, and government. There's no doubt about it. So the government has work to do to rebuild that relationship because you cannot provide a world-class health service without bringing the clinicians along with you. All right. Just before you go, we, we, we've had a reporter out at... Uh uh, the I'm trying to think the portfolio she's got, but certainly uh, still a transport minister, uh, of course, deputy premier and uh, tourism minister, Rita Safiotti, who knows a lot about the sort of planning and feasibilities that have to be done on big projects, given that she oversees Metronet. We asked her about this particular sixteen and a half thousand dollar. Here's what she said. Seems like good value for money. <laughs> um, look, I don't know the details of that, but uh, I'll probably get a response from the health minister's office on that. Yeah. Okay, good value for money, but still some questions, I reckon. Uh, look, I think you can't you can't determine if anything's good value to money unless you and uh, uh, good value for money unless you're actually given access to the to to the to the document to look at it yourself. All right. Hey, thanks very much for joining us, Michael. Appreciate your time. Anytime.